Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hiba and this is Hiba's Roller Coaster. People often think that Canadian English and US American English are basically the same accent. And I think if you aren't from either of these two countries, you can't really be blamed for thinking that the two accents sound very similar or even sound as if they were the same. I was actually in a very similar situation up until I moved to Canada and I lived there for a longer period of time. And then I've come to learn that there are actually many differences between Canadian English and US American English. I've realized that there is actually something called Canadian English. So let me enlighten you in today's video as I had been enlightened by my experience in Canada. Okay, let's start with pronunciation. So in my very first Canada related video, I mentioned that Canadians don't actually say sorry as we would expect from North Americans, but they say sorry. And that's not the only thing that they pronounce differently compared to US Americans. For example, Canadians might tell you that they live in Canada and that you can visit them if you don't get ban banned banned from the country. Banned. Can Canada. Can. Okay, I can't really pronounce it, but I think you got the idea. So they don't actually say Canada, they say Canada. Canada. And you can visit them if you're not ban banned from the country. Okay, anyways, look it up, but there's a, a slight difference in how they say the word Canada. Also, if you go to Canada, you might as well visit Quebec, but watch out for the mosquitoes. Okay, this sentence didn't make any sense, but <laughs> again, pronunciation. So it's not Quebec, it's Quebec. And it's also not mosquitoes, it's mosquitoes, something like that. Please correct me if I'm making any mistakes, but these are the things that I have noticed and that I kind of picked up when I was there. So it kind of sounded to me like they weren't saying mosquitoes, but mosquitoes. Anyways, that one I'm sure of, Quebec, not Quebec. Also, in case nature is calling and you need to go, you know, do your business, <laughs> you might ask for the washroom. So in Canada, especially when you are in public, you will see signs saying washroom, not bathroom, not toilet, not loo. It's the washroom. When in Canada, you might have a local ask you if you could change a toonie for two loonies. Okay, so toonie is a $2 coin, loonie is a $1 coin. And if you ask me where the name comes from, I have no clue. I believe, or at least that's my interpretation of the term, that loony comes from the word lonely or alone because it's like one dollar and then toony kind of like two or twins or whatever two dollars so i guess that could be one interpretation at least <laughs> this idea helped me kind of know what a loony was and what a toony was so people won't actually say can you give me a one dollar coin they would be like do you have a loony or do you have a toony Okay guys, this next one is really, really important. If you are someone who pronounces the second T in that word, people will know right away that you aren't from that city. Why? Because everyone calls that city Toronto, but people living in Toronto say Toronto. So Torontonians call their own city Toronto. Like, I think it was on Instagram, somebody wrote me, they were like, why do you always say Toronto and not Toronto? Well, now you know, because I lived in Toronto and I just got used to saying it the way all of the locals were saying it. Because if you say Toronto, people will know right away that you aren't from Toronto. You can thank me later. So, when it's cold outside, you will see people wearing this. Most Americans, US Americans, would call this a beanie. But in Canada, this thing is called a toque. So Canadians wear a toque when it's cold out. 
Don't ask me where this word comes from, it's just a Canadian word for beanie. Okay, for this next one, it took me so long to understand what Canadians meant when they said that they were going on a Timmy's run. To understand this one, you need to know that there's a coffee shop chain in Canada which is really famous called Tim Hortons. And this is kind of like the Canadian version of Starbucks, I'd say. I hope it's not offensive that I say that. So people really love Tim Hortons. They love their Timmy. So when they go to Tim Hortons to get coffee, they might say that they're going on a Timmy's run. Or they might invite you to go on a Timmy's run. <laughs> so it doesn't really have anything to do with running. It just means that you will go to Tim Hortons and get coffee. Another word that Canadians pronounce differently compared to US Americans is the word process. So US Americans might say process, Canadians say process. The same goes for this word. So in the US people might say organization, but in Canada people say organization. So you might notice that some of the words are pronounced in a more British way compared to US American English. Last but definitely not least, so in Canada when you are about to leave a shop or a restaurant, people might wish you to have a good one. And obviously that phrase, have a good one, is not necessarily restricted to Canadian English. It also exists in other kinds of English. However, in Canada it is kind of Canadianized in a way, I would say, because Canadians often use a tiny sound right after saying that phrase, and that sound is very Canadian. A. Eh? <laughs> so people often might say, have a good one, eh? This is a very tiny typical Canadian marker in speech and in this case, for example, it's used to kind of put emphasis on what is said. So I really want you to have a good one. Have a good one, eh? And what's interesting about this phrase is also that no one really knows what one stands for. <laughs> I guess it means, you know, it could mean have a good evening, have a good day, have a good morning, I don't know, so have a good one, whatever it is that you're having. But have a good one. So a can be used after any kind of phrase to make it sound a bit more rhetorical in a way, like a rhetorical question with a Canadian flavor, I would say. So you could say, oh, today is a really nice day, eh? Or the weather is nice, eh? Or you could say, let's go get some coffee, eh? So yeah, as you can see, it's just a tiny Canadian marker used after phrases to make things a bit more rhetorical and it's it's really sweet. I like it. So there you have it guys, differences between Canadian English and US American English. So if you do go to Canada one day and you want to sound a bit more Canadian, you know what you have to do. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, if you did please give it a thumbs up, also let me know in the comments below if you know any other differences and if you want me to make another video talking about even more differences between these two dialects or things that are very specific to Canadian English, there's so many different aspects to it, so if you want me to make another video just let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to let other people know about this channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. I can't wait to see you on Monday with another video. Have a good one, eh? <laughs> and also take care, eh? See you on Monday. Assalamu alaikum.